How's it going, everyone? Time to check out this game, Walden. This is actually a game based on a book written in 1854 by Henry David Thoreau, who was a well, he was a philosopher, he was a writer, he was an abolitionist, and the book was basically about how he decided to go live in the woods for two years. Now, in the book, he wrote Walden. He compressed it down to just one year, so because he basically wanted to separate his growth and development by the seasons, so you know, one at a time, which was very clever. And I actually read the book this year, and I was quite excited when I saw that the uh, University of Southern California made a video game based on it. How often do you see a video game based on a book? So this is uh, really cool. I hope this is a good game. And considering uh, how I've been really into nature and mountain men and frontier life and all that this year, this is a perfect time for me to play this game. Now, interestingly enough, I think Henry David Thoreau did this in 1845. Concord, Massachusetts, so it wasn't exactly the frontier. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even the Wild West, so... I mean, I've seen some people give him shit. Oh, this guy was still going grocery shopping and stuff, you know, while living out in the woods and stuff. You know, basically, basically calling him kind of a phony, but I'm like, hey, this guy was still building a cabin in the woods in the middle of the 19th century. Like, this is, you know... If he still went back to civilization every now and then, so what? I mean, this guy was, uh, I mean, he wasn't doing it to be a badass or anything either. He was just doing it to live life to its fullest and understand the meaning of life. So, it's a very inspirational book. Um, <clears throat> I particularly like the beginning and the end. The last chapter had some of the most quotable lines from American writing, I guess, from the 19th century. I mean, just so many quotes in that last part of the book. So, I mean, yeah, some really good stuff. But he also kind of goes into a, a bit of the uh, ordinary and the uh, scientific, kind of like how Jules Verne did in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, just cramming marine biology up my ass. <laughs> Henry David Thoreau kind of crammed uh, some botany and stuff like that up my ass, but it's interesting. It's interesting, especially if you think of Lewis and Clark and all the things they had to learn. Meteor uh, meteorology, botany, geology, uh, biology. I mean, these guys really had to know their stuff back then. Not just in order to see the world in all its majesty, but to survive the world, too. So, But anyway, enough of me yammering. Let's get to the game. I hope this is good. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to reduce it to its lowest terms, and, if it proved to be mean, to get the whole and genuine meanness of it or if it were sublime, to know it by experience and to give a true account of it. All right, this is giving me some uh, Skyrim and Oblivion vibes. That's freaking awesome. What a cool idea for a video game. So yeah, here we are, Walden Pond, Concord, Massachusetts. I'm actually planning on going to uh, New England next week, so I'm going to try and 
come to Walden Pond. Okay. Yeah, there's some obsidian. When I wrote the following pages, or rather the bulk of them, I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts, and earned my living by the labor of my hands only. How cool would that be, building your own house in the woods? Press and hold B. Okay. Huh. I don't even know how to say that. Ulus Glabra. I can pick it up. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> How fucking cool is that? Learning some botany. Oh, that's freaking cool. Hmm. Pinos Vegidia. Or rigida. Pinos rigida. Yeah, that sounds better. That's freaking cool. When I first took up my abode in the woods, my house was not finished. It was a pleasant hillside where I worked, covered with pine woods, through which I looked out on the pond and a small open field in the woods where pines and hickories were springing up. Leopos Americanos. <laughs> you know, it's funny when I go, I might see your descendants. Alright. Beautiful uh, cabin. July 4th, 1845. Dearest Henry, congratulations on the start of your experiment. I hope that the work goes well and the ideas are fruitful. Mr. Emerson says you are intent to devour yourself in our woods, but I hope that you will remember to take good care and keep yourself well. Mother worries, as do I. Your loving sister, Sophia. Sophia? I don't know if that's how it was pronounced back then. July 1845. My dear Henry, Mr. Emerson has assisted my family in acquiring a house near Conquer, and there we are now, writing and living like philosophers, which is to say with little but happily. I will visit you soon and bring Mr. Garrison of the Liberator. We have all been so inspired by his earnest and unequivocal writings regarding the moral stain of slavery on our nation. Perhaps you will speak at our Lyceum on the topic. Yours truly, A. Bronson Alcott. Dropping some names there. Yeah. July, 1845. Dear Mr. Thoreau, my employer, Dr. Agassiz, was happy to meet you last month with Mr. Emerson and was quite impressed with your knowledge of local biology. He wonders if you might be able to provide some specimens for him to use in his work. Dr. Agassiz would gladly come to Concord to collect such specimens himself, 
but is drawn away by numerous and pressing engagements. If you are amenable to this idea, we will soon send you requests for these items and are happy to pay you for your trouble. Sincerely, James Elliot Cabot, assistant to Dr. Agassiz, Harvard University. Yeah, Harvard. Huh. Yeah, that was uh, Henry David's uh, alma mater, Harvard. There is some of the same fitness in a man's building his own house that there is in a bird's building its own nest. Who knows, but if men constructed their dwellings with their own hands, and provided food for themselves and families simply and honestly enough, the poetic faculty would be universally developed, as birds universally sing when they are so engaged. Hmm. Oh shit. <laughs> uh That's very cool. I can sew. You're in the hang of it. So, I mean, you had to know everything back then. There was nobody gonna rescue your ass out here. And there was no YouTube either. So, you had to know your stuff. I don't know how you learned it. I guess either your parents or somebody. It's getting dark. Might be a little creepy out here. One for solitude, two for sh friendship, and three for society. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, huh. family business. Interesting. Take out your know, lantern. Oh, cool. All right. Hmm. What are you doing now? Emerson asked. Do you keep a journal? So I make my first entry today. Too far from the first battle of the American Revolution. I 
think we've read enough letters for one day. Let's go take a look around. I think the pond is down here. Interesting. My house was on the side of a hill, immediately on the edge of the larger wood, in the midst of a young forest of pitch pines and hickories, and half a dozen rods from the pond, to which a narrow footpath led down the hill. In my front yard grew the strawberry, blackberry, and life everlasting, John's wart and goldenrod, shrub oaks and sand cherry, blueberry and groundnut. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. So I'm basically riding Walden <laughs> as I go along and uh, find everything. That is freaking what a brilliant idea for a video game. This is definitely something I missed back in the 360 days, Xbox 360 days. What are these? I guess you could call them B games. You know how we have AAA games, but they call the lower budget games B games. Because they were always so clever. But it seemed like B-Games kind of went away for a while, but they seem to be coming back now, thankfully, so. That's freaking cool. What a clever, clever idea. July 1845. Dear Henry, you've told me yourself that it is difficult to begin anything without borrowing, and I know that you can use an axe, so I've left one for you in my front yard by the chopping stump. Do come by any time to fetch it. Perhaps we can discuss the new lecture I am working on while you are here. Your friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson. That was nice of him. Yeah, I think he's up there. Let's go check out these arrowheads first. I want to get a good look at the pond, too. Hmm. Pine or strawberries? Strawberries. My residence was more favorable, not only to thought, but to serious reading than a university. And though I was beyond the range of the ordinary circulating library, I had more than ever come within the influence of those books which circulate round the world. Hey, Homer.
That'd be hilarious if I had the whole freaking Iliad. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Absolutely. That's freaking cool. Yeah, Walden Pond, man. Can't wait to see this place in real life. Isn't there another arrowhead? Yep, there you are. The grand necessity, then, for our bodies is to keep warm, to keep the vital heat in us. That is a fishing gear. Huh. Oh, I got a fishing pole. Task. Okay. Petula Lenta. Black Birch. Alright. I just uh, was up in Minnesota last week and they were white birch trees everywhere. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous trees. Well, good thing it's starting me off in spring. Start yourself. That'd be pretty bad if I die in this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta figure out how to play. So, yeah, squirrel. Interesting. That's a tough word. Skirios, Ozanios, Ozonios, something like that. Right along, little dude. so loud, or than Walden Pond itself. I am no more lonely than a single mullion or dandelion in a pasture, or a bean leaf, or a sorrel, or a horsefly, or a bumblebee. I am no more lonely than the millbrook, or a weathercock, or the north star, or the south wind, or an April shower, or a January thaw, or the first spider in a new house.
Oh, man. Come on, Henry's hungry. We need some food. Go get that axe and see what uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson is up to. Find out the hard way. Yeah, I wonder if uh, USC had their, I don't know, arborists tell them all these uh, trees and their botanists and biologists. I'm sure they had uh, quite a team working on this game. Is he up here? No, I'm on the wrong way. Now I gotta go around this little pond here. Interesting. Oh, that takes care of the food bomb. Get some berries. Very cool. Living off the land, man. It wasn't being a hippie back then, it was survival. <laughs> yeah. Too far. Need to get there before the next time. All sound heard at the greatest possible distance produces one and the same effect, the vibration of the universal lyre, just as the intervening atmosphere makes a distant ridge of the earth interesting to our eyes by the azure tint it imparts to it. This is always the time of day that puts me to sleep. Twilight. Wasn't very fun when I was a delivery driver, though. <laughs> I fell asleep plenty of times at red lights because of Twilight. Concord. 
Been to Lexington. I haven't been to Concord yet, so. Every day or two, I stroll to the village to hear some of the gossip which is incessantly going on there, circulating either from mouth to mouth or from newspaper to newspaper, and which, taken in homeopathic doses, was really as refreshing in its way as the rustle of leaves and the peeping of frogs. Interesting. <laughs> I was like, are they making me send a serial killer or something? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, let's go see Miss Emerson. It's very good to make your acquaintance, Mr. Thoreau. Your sister seems to believe our thoughts and philosophies are very much aligned. It is good to find a youth so interested in the finer fruits of thought. Miss Fuller, it was a pleasure to meet you and thank you for the introductions to such brilliant new company. I am sure that writers such as these will fill our new journal with rays of golden talent. I have another name to add to the roster of our dial, Mr. Henry David Thoreau, a fine brave youth of this town from whom I expect great things. I will send you some of his work soon. My son, young Waldo, is very well, and wife Lydian sends her love, R. W. Emerson. Recommendation for Henry David Thoreau. I cordially recommend Mr. Henry D. Thoreau, a graduate of Harvard University in August 1837, to the confidence of such parents or guardians as may propose to employ him as an instructor. I have the highest confidence in Mr. Thoreau's moral character and in his intellectual ability. He is an excellent scholar, a man of energy and kindness, and I shall esteem the town fortunate that secures his services. R. Waldo Emerson. I praise, I praise. Yeah, dark houses would have been back then. Henry, there you are. Hello. Oh, Henry, how goes your new experiment? Has genius struck yet at my woodlot? Yes, in fact, the experiment is going quite well. Excellent to hear. I do look forward to reading your new work. I hope you're keeping a good journal, full of your insights about life in the woods. Since you're here, I could use your assistance with some research I'm doing for a new lecture. Could you spare the time to help me? Certainly. Well, thank you. I know you're quite busy with your own work, but I need help finding my copy of Homer's Iliad. I saw that you were reading it down by your new cabin. Do you still have it there? Yes, I have seen it and can get it for you. Oh, that's wonderful. When you come back, we can discuss the passage I'm looking for. In the meanwhile, I found some books on bean planting and local wildlife you might find useful. I put them on the table in my library for you. I look forward to it. Goodbye for now.
<laughs> Looks complicated. Hmm. Old Farmer's Almanac. See all the stuff you had to know back then? <laughs> yeah. Just to have something to eat. Chickadees. Massachusetts still has minks. Probably not. Thanks for the fur trade, I guess. Huh. Never had a wild apple before. Crab apple, yeah, but. Fable 2 flashbacks. <laughs> uh, how many hours do I spend doing that? My god.
Usually I don't think when I eat red things, but... <laughs> I mean, how often as children do we eat those red berries? something this time. Ah, oh, come on. Get it or what? I don't know, is there like an inventory system or something? Oh shit, I haven't even saved the game yet. Uh, I hope I got it. Messy kid. Ah, oh, hello. Hello. Ah, oh, you found my home. Good for you, Henry. I wanted to look at that passage about the generations of mankind and how they're like the autumn leaves. You know the one I mean. Yes, I've read it. Well, that's good. I'd hoped you would and that it would give you inspiration. Your experiment reminds me of the image of heroic life that Homer gives us. I wonder, can we all make our lives heroic in our quality of living, if not on the field of battle? Since you're here, I've also been looking all over for my works of Confucius. I was reading it the other day down by the marsh. Have you seen it there by any chance? I haven't seen it, but I can look for it. 
wonderful. Let me mark the very spot I think I left it on your map so that you can find it. That shouldn't be difficult to find. I'll see you again soon. Yep, can't go on with Homer and Confucius. Yep. Well, guys, I actually have to get ready for a trip tomorrow. I'm going to New Mexico, so I'm going to cut this a little short, but this is a cool game. I'm really enjoying this. I don't know how exciting this game is to watch me play, but it is very interesting, at least. Oh, these blueberries. Very healthy. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. And yeah. Very cool idea for game. But uh, anyway, guys, hope you're enjoying this too so far, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.